He's back! Sorry guys, I uh... I forgot my account password. The Legend of Zelda is one of the most popular gaming franchises on earth and has been for quite a few decades, which is why it's always struck me as a little odd that merchandise was so scarce. And I'm not talking about those black t-shirts with a golden triforce on it or a Velcro wallet that's worn by every single EB Games employee from 2006 to 2014. But before Amiibo, the odds of finding a Link statue or action figure were slim to none. When you think of the most expensive Zelda collectibles, the items that typically come to mind are box or graded copies of the games. But we all know that old games are expensive because N64 cardboard tastes way better than the chalky, plasticky white Wii cases. So let's look at the rarest and most expensive Zelda collectibles that aren't the games. And one so rare and so elusive that for a long time, People didn't even believe it existed. And these are in no particular order. Starting off with the Breath of the Wild Master Edition. The Master Edition was a special version of Breath of the Wild available during the game's release in 2007. Now when this launched, it was $129.99 USD and came with a copy of the game, its soundtrack on disc, a Switch carrying case, a coin, a game map, and a detailed sculpt of the Master Sword. For a while now, most big game releases come with a pre-order or special edition bonus, like Spider-Man 2 coming with a Venom and Spidey statue, or Call of Duty coming with a Juggernog mini fridge, or a pair of night vision goggles, or a real life RC Friendly bomb RCX car killstreak. At the time, I couldn't justify buying this thing because A, I was but a wee boy with no job, B, these things seemingly never hold their value and the quality is rarely worth the price, and C, I was but a wee boy with no job. Sorry, just on that note of quality, in this interview with Reggie fils the president of Nintendo of America at the time, they wanted to advertise this bundle. And look at the Master Sword, the thing's already bent. So with Christmas money not quite covering it this time, I bought my Switch and the regular version of Zelda. No Master Sword Killstreak Edition bonus. But if I could go back in time, I would go up to my younger self, quickly give him a right book, take his money, and buy this thing because $1,000 complete in box? Are you kidding me? Most of these prices are going to be coming from game price charting. But even not complete in box, just with all this stuff in it, is around $700. But in good condition, or even unopened, graded versions, they're going for $2,000. Are we serious? Now, if you can't justify spending $2,000 on a statue and some other goodies, get ready because you're going to be hearing a lot more about statues. I, I don't really want this. I mean, I'll, I'll take it if you don't want it, Alan. Um, you don't want that. I mean, yeah, Could sure, I, yeah. Thanks, First four figures specialize in high quality, hand painted resin statues, primarily of video game and anime characters. I'm not a massive statue guy, so I don't know a whole lot about these things, so please bear with me if I get some stuff wrong here. Whilst I can't really justify dropping upwards of $1,000 on a figure that doesn't move. Right! Then I fucking think you can lay around my house all day doing fuck all. Go find a fucking job. Apparently, this price tag is not uncommon in this space. And look, I'm cherry picking here because a lot of these things can be priced at $150 to $200 and then go up into the thousands. But where the real money comes in is their resale value. A lot of the expensive figures seem to be produced in low quantities. From what I've seen, the most expensive figures in their Zelda line tend to be from Twilight Princess, produced around 2014 to 15, all of which seem to have drastically increased in price. Zelda originally cost $350 US dollars when she was initially released. However, she now fetches upwards of $1,200 online. These are all going by sold auctions on eBay. So when you see a Zant that's listed at $4,000, it doesn't mean that this is the money, average money, money, price. Money, money, money. Then again, for all I know, this could be a steal and I could be having another Master Edition moment. There are plenty of variations like Ganon's Puppet Zelda or Zora Tunic Link, but the rarest seems to be a variant of Link and Epona. In 2012, First Four Figures made a statue of Link on the back of Epona, but there were two versions. The first is a highly detailed and beautifully colored version that was $425 of which 2,500 were made, and a limited edition version for an extra $25 featuring the iconic look of Link being dipped in a bowl of balsamic vinegar. 500 of this bronze statue variant were produced, so in theory, the bronze one should be more expensive, right? Well, funnily enough, people actually wanted the one that was more accurate to the game and colourful and all around looked better, leading to the bronze one selling for around 1000 whereas the version with five times as much stock can actually be worth around $200 to $300 more. 
Now I'm sorry for the quality of these images because for some reason it's very difficult to find high quality photos of these statues, but at least the photos weren't taken with the next item on this list. The Game Boy Camera is a relatively obscure attachment that you could insert into your Game Boy cartridge slot, allowing the user to take photos, I guess. Look, I hesitate to call them that, but a vanilla Game Boy Camera sits at around $40 loose. But around the release of Zelda Ocarina of Time in late 1998, Nintendo Power ran a promotion where US readers of the magazine could mail order a limited edition gold Zelda version. Around 2,000 of these were made. Price charting has a loose one priced at $1,000 with the instruction manual alone demanding the same price, whereas a complete in-box version is estimated to be worth around $4,300. Maybe that's why they stopped putting instruction manuals in games. They were worth $1,000 each and selling it to us for like 60. How about you, you bitch, you make that deal? I make that deal. I don't blame you. Damn good deal. This is the last statue on this list, I promise. For those who don't know what Club Nintendo was, let me first start off by saying I'm sorry that your life will never quite be complete, but let me explain what it was. Whenever you bought a Nintendo game, do you remember you'd get that little red and white leaflet with a Mario cap on it? If you ever looked at it, it told you to redeem some points. Well, if you went to the Club Nintendo website and you did that, you'd be eligible to spend those points on exclusive Nintendo items. Wii remote holders, pencil cases, pillows, pretty standard items, but every now and again, you would get something beyond the quality of what you'd expect for a free handout, like a gold painted sculpture of Lincoln Epona back in 2006. Celebrating the release of Twilight Princess, the statue originally cost a total of one, oh no, okay, read that wrong, sorry, 15,000 points, and only available in Europe. For perspective, each game you bought gave you 250 points, meaning you'd have to buy about 60 games to get this thing. Nonetheless, it sold out instantly. What happened? 3,800 were made, and now fetch up to 700 pounds on resale sites. Twilight Princess related items seem to be the most expensive on this list, I'm not sure why. Now when I show you this, what do you think? What, some bootleg version of Twilight Princess somehow ported to the DS? Or maybe an actual DS port that was in development at some point? Well, no, not really, neither of those things actually. The DS cartridge was handed out at E3 2005, and within it holds an oh so sacred heavily, heavily compressed version of Twilight Princess's trailer. Yeah, really not that special. Until you see the price, upwards of $2,000 loose and 7,000 in new condition. For what reason? I might actually puke, get back a little, I'm gonna puke, stay back. Oh Only around 500 of this thing were made, but does that really justify this? Who'd have thought that the furry Link game in negative 240p would have cost this much. Okay, I know this one's kind of cheating here, but I just thought it was really unique and I haven't seen Nintendo do this many other times, so I wanted to include it. Released in Christmas of 2005, Nintendo honored the birth of Christ in the traditional manner by delivering a bundle of Metroid Prime and the Wind Waker in the same case. This edition of the two games features a split box art design and a disc for each game, a very unique collector's item, and back in 2005 would have been an absolute steal. Two of the console's best games for the price of one, you can't really go wrong. But oh, the price is not the same anymore. What would have cost maybe $60 back in 2005 is now hovering around 800 to 1000 USD. Also, this just reminded me, remember when Nintendo released that Switch trailer and it had Metroid Prime 4? I have not seen anything but that logo for that game since. Anything's possible. In the 1990s, Nintendo action figures had a special aura to them. They looked high quality, but just had a certain look. Inbred, I think is the professional term. Epoch, or Epoch, I, I don't know, is a Japanese company who nowadays are primarily known for making Slovenian families. The beady eye little furry things. There were quite a few toys based off the early Legend of Zelda games, many of which hold quite a high value despite their features. Like this Link just looks like a victim. I don't know what of, but he is a victim of something. 
but some of the most expensive are Epoch's line of Majora's Mask figures. Now, if there's one takeaway from this video, if you're looking for a stable blue chip investment that's gonna give you a great return on investment, anything that has Link and a horse seems to be the best bet. The opponent and Link action figures seem to hover around $500 in good condition, and complete and box versions of Zora and Deku go for around the same price, but due to their age, seem to have dyed the plastic a nice vintage piss color. However, as expensive as these figures are, they aren't too hard to come by. A few quick searches on Google, you'll find some listings, unlike the last entry on this list. In December of 2004, The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap was released on Game Boy Advance. As part of the game's launch in PAL regions, a special Zelda-themed GBA bundle was released. It came with a copy of the game and a gold GBA SP, with the Triforce on it of course, but annoyingly when you flip the screen up the Triforce is actually upside down, but nevertheless it cost around £90 when it was released, which is around US$160, dollars, but only available in Europe and Australia. 25,000 of these things were released, which already makes this one quite rare with good condition ones going for upwards of $400 online and complete in box editions, they're gonna be sending you into the multiple hundreds if not thousands. And the reason I brought this one up was because there was a promotion where residents of the UK, Isle of Man and Channel Islands who bought this bundle had a chance at pulling a golden ticket. What did this golden ticket get you? A 24 carat gold plated Game Boy Advance SP. The contest started on December 11th, 2004 and ended on February 28th, 2005. There are seven units known to exist, six of which were one and one that was given away on a UK gaming website. For a long time, people didn't even know if this thing existed. Kind of similar to that gold weed that was given to the Queen of England. People didn't even really know if this thing existed anymore, or even in the first place. Early. Until about five or so years ago, when new images finally resurfaced of this thing. It's not known how many still exist, or where they are, or who owns them, or even the price. As according to some articles, people are asking upwards of $80,000 to $95,000, but no one really knows because these things aren't ever really sold, at least in publicly visible auctions. I don't know what this thing costs. This thing is an anomaly. It doesn't have a Triforce logo on it. It didn't come in a box. It doesn't have anything marking it as a Zelda themed item. So as of the making of this video, this is all we know. But I reckon that'll wrap it up. And look, there are plenty more Zelda items I could have talked about. So maybe this is a video idea I might come back to at some point. Holy God, what are you showing me? Because Nintendo has made a lot of weird, rare items. Like, especially for the GameCube. You got pens, flashlights. I think they had GameCube nicotine patches at one point. But thanks for sticking with me. I know I took a bit of a break there for a while, but I got some ideas and I'm back now. So I'm excited to start making videos again. Also, just quickly, just because you have a video game item that's old, doesn't make it rare. Your copy of Zelda 1 that's sun faded and has a sticky label isn't rare and isn't worth $100. In fact, maybe it's worth five or even, actually, you know what? It's probably worth like maybe a violated link. That's it. Hey, come on.